Today I'm going to be taking a look at the newest release from Vario. I think it's a very cool watch. It's uh, something that I think the affordable watch industry is really missing, more dress watch options. And being a dress watch fan, I just love the fact that this watch exists. Full disclosure, I was sent this watch to review. It basically, Vario just reached out, said if I wanted to take a look at it, and I did. Uh, I don't have to show them the video beforehand. They don't have any control over what I say. Uh, I don't get to keep the watch. I either buy it or send it back. And yeah, that's all there is. And let's take a closer look at the watch. So you have an outside diameter of about 25.6, inside diameter closer to 20.8, lug to lug of 38.8, height of 12 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch. This watch runs on two Ronda Slimtech 1062 uh, quartz calibers. You obviously have one in the front, one in the back, the watch does reverse, and you have two separate crowns, so you can have two different time zones technically showing on the watch, which is kind of cool. We do have an enamel dial on the front and on the back, a more classic silver brush dial. We do have 50 meters of stated water resistance with a push-pull crown on both sides and sapphire crystal on the front and the back. Last but not least, this retails for $428 from Vario directly. It is a limited edition of 100 pieces per color, and they do it in a green, blue, and red. So looking at the dial of this watch, and it's very interestingly done. You can see, uh, I guess the main front dial, I, I'll call it since it doesn't have the screws on it, is done in a very nice enamel type, very glossy base color. You do have this dial, which at some angles looks pretty saturated, at others has a somewhat matte tone to it, uh, but that's it has that classy kind of uh, enamel glossy type look to it. And overall, the dial just looks very nice. It has a very nice color tone. It's very even throughout the dial, and it just looks in a weird way smooth you know it just has a very nice texture or I guess really lack of texture to the surface that I think just gives it a very premium feel. The text is kept very minimally here we just have Vario here at the 12 o'clock and then the minutes track on the outside on the very board of the watch and then we have these uh, diamond shaped markers at 12, 3, 6, and 9. Uh, it is interesting because we don't have a seconds hand here it is a quartz watch so you don't really need it it has just a classic kind of leaf style handset which I think pair really nicely with the dressier-ish leaning styling and uh, I think it just looks really nice on the watch. If we flip the watch over, what I do really like is the faces are completely unique. They don't have the same dial layout, they don't have the same general design, and they have a very much different finishing. The silver dial does come on all three colored variants, so you do have a very classic silver versatile tone, uh, basically that you can wear with anything if you don't really want that specific color for the day, which is really nice. You can see with this dial, we do have the uh, brushing along the outside track here, which is done really nicely, a very fine brushing pattern. Then we have the middle of the dial, which is done a lot more similarly to the other side, which is enamel-ish looking. It's not quite enamel, uh, but very much along that vein. And then you can see you have the stick markers and numerals along the outside edge, and then you have the minutes track now on the inner uh, square here so you have much more of a sector type feel sector layout and you have more of that square within a square within a square type look uh, whereas here you get a little bit more open space a little bit more uh, breathing room on the dial so it's really nice to have those two flavors those two feels to the watch and I think it is executed really well Something to note about the white dial in contrast is that we do have the blued hands. They are not heat blue, they're just kind of painted. I think a benefit to this hand set in particular is because it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit daintier, the kind of painted blue effect isn't as harsh or dramatic. It doesn't look that bad. It looks, I think, pretty decent on the watch itself. And I don't mind that they aren't heat blued. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a $400 watch. For the price point, you don't expect heat blued hands. And as it is executed here, I think it pairs pretty well. Overall, I think the dials are really well done. It's nice to see that they did a different uh, dial design on each side. They didn't just copy paste, but in a different color. And I appreciate that. So taking a look in natural sunlight in the shade, we see the green is a lot darker. It takes on a very deep tone. Uh, at certain off angles, the crystal kind of takes over and takes away from the green. But as soon as we go into natural sunlight, the green pops out a little bit more. It's a lot brighter in direct sun. It doesn't have as much color shift at certain off angles it does go a little bit darker but mainly this bright green and then if we switch over to the silver you can see there's a lot more dimension in the dial the gray parts of it kind of change from a very bright white to a little bit more gray silver um, so it's a very interesting dial especially in direct sunlight and then as soon as we go into the shade there's actually a little bit less color shift in the shade of the dial especially uh, you know very very dead on it's almost fully white but then at certain off angles you do get that gray tone that pops out more but it is a little bit more alive in uh, direct sunlight than it is in the shade. 
So zooming in on the dial here, and I think this watch is pretty much finished at how you would expect for a watch at this price point. It isn't anything mind blowing, but it is well executed for what you're paying for. You can see here in the Vario text, there are some like little hints of the lettering missing. It's nothing too major, and it's something I've never really noticed from wrist view, but obviously zooming in here, you can definitely see, especially on the O there, a little bit of it is missing. But at the end of the day, it still looks good, still is well executed, I think. And nicely enough, it, it does still have a little bit of three dimensionality to the printing. It's not just flat on the dial, very, very thin. And I do like that. It, it shows they take a little bit of an extra step. Interestingly enough, the story is not the same for the uh, minutes track. It has actually very full, very nicely done, very clean. So I guess something just maybe happened with my model in particular with the logo, or maybe with just the logos in themselves on the watches. But thankfully, the minutes track is a lot more cohesive in its printing. It looks really, really nice. Again, it still has that same uh, pure white print and same three dimensionality to it, especially the diamond markers look really well done. So really no complaints on the rest of the printing on this watch. You can really just see all throughout, it is still well done. There aren't any splotches like you see in the logo. Looking at the handset, it is the only applied metal element and it is the most roughly finished part. You do have some scratches along the hour hand, along the minute hand, and while they aren't major, and honestly because of the full curvature of the leaf style hand, some of the scratches are hard to see, um, they are there, you know, at the end of the day, they aren't huge, they aren't, I think, major, and for a kind of QC job, I think for $400 it's fair, but it would have been nice if they're not there, but uh, as it stands, I don't think it's too badly done, and at least the hands themselves have a very nice shape to it, the metal itself isn't rough, and it still is a uh, kind of beautifully done in its execution outside of the finishing. And because this uh, green or all the color dials that Vario has done for this series is done in this enamel type uh, finish, you do have this very nice inky quality to it. Like you can definitely tell there at the middle of the hand stack where the dial itself bends in a little bit, there is that beautiful shiny lip to it. And I think it just looks really interesting. And at the end of the day, it gives the whole dial this very nice, clean, crisp effect. And moving on to the other dial, I think the printing is just kind of tricking my mind here and it looks even more three-dimensional, even thicker, but that might be because the contrast seems higher uh, and the black just pops out a little bit more. Here you can see the printing is much more uniformly done. There isn't any uh, splotches missing from that Vario logo. You can tell in the uh, minutes track there are slight little uh, areas where the uh, lines that bleed a little bit. But other than that, it still is really well executed, very thick uh, application, looks really nice, has an inky quality to it, and I think looks pretty premium. The outside numerals by contrast don't look as thick. I honestly think they probably are the same thickness, but because they're a little bit larger, it doesn't pop out as much. They are still well executed. They are uh, still very contrasty against the dial. Can't complain too much. There aren't any major splotches missing and the lines are actually very clean for the bigger numerals. And focusing for a second on the outer hours track, you do see it has this beautiful brush finish on it. Because it is brushed, you do get this light play where it goes from very bright silver to very dark gray. And it has just this very beautiful deep tone to it. The brushing is very uniform. There aren't any uh, spots where it looks cheap or looks poorly done. It gives a little extra flair to the dial that otherwise I think wouldn't have been there and it would have been sorely missing had it not been there. And that lovely contrast between the brushed outer dial and the more pure white inner dial is very, very nice. Again, especially as the outer dial takes on different tones. It's definitely a nice contrast to the opposite dial side, which is just purely one color. It's always going to be that color. Focusing for a second on the hands, you can see they aren't as scratched as the metal ones on the other side. I don't believe these are made out of metal, so thankfully that's kind of one area where the watch can prevail a little bit. You can see right there, kind of next to the hour hand, there is a little bit of a speck of like black on the dial. So there is a little bit of a QC issue there. I think for the price point, it's fair. Again, this is something I've never noticed from wrist view. And this is something you'll never notice unless you get a macro photo of your watch or look with a loop and, and really try to find it. In day-to-day -day wear, it's something that will never bother you. Although I don't love that it's there, I don't hate it too much. So moving on to the case of this watch, and I think it probably is the most interesting part about it. You do have this very Cartier Basculante reminiscent square within a square styling, or really rectangle within a rectangle. Um, and then as you turn it around, you have two faces. So it is a little bit more reverso-esque in that sense. Looking a little bit more generally at first, we do have very rounded, soft edges. You don't have anything that's too harsh, too geometric here, which is nice. It, it reminds me a lot of the Cartier tank with those sweeping rounded edges. And then if you look uh, from the top portion, you have only high polish. If you look on the side, you do have vertical brushing on both the side of the case, and I guess you can say the side of the uh, spinny part of the case. 
you do see we have a central screw in there kind of just to keep that middle dial in place kind of nice it's just a you know mark of the watch being made and it doesn't look too bad it's very nicely centered and i don't mind it again the brushing is done very nicely very finely if you turn it over we have the pretty much exact same finishing all high polish but you can tell on the back side you do have these four screws on the outside of the case that kind of tell you this is more the quote unquote back of the watch even though you can wear it on either side it does uh, not look as perfectly clean because you do have the screws i don't mind it although i would say you know this side almost feels a little bit classier than the other side and the screws are maybe not super classy you have to put the screws somewhere and again because the color is almost the star of the show i don't mind the screws being on the other side Day to day when I wore the watch, the screws didn't really pop out at me too much. Uh, again, they had to be there somewhere. So at the end of the day, this watch is 12 millimeters thick. It is not the thinnest watch ever, but you are also getting two watch faces, which not many other watches do, and especially not affordably. What I do really like is the uh, case back is completely flat. It just, just sit perfectly flat on wrist. The bottom uh, watch face, I guess you can say, doesn't really dig into the wrist in any way or the crown doesn't dig it is very uh, comfortable to wear you also do see we have this beveling all the way around the case side here which not only is just an accent to the watch again also the top portion of the watch are all highly polished so you had to have the polish go somewhere but it's nice because those corners are more rounded it leads nicely into the bottom of the case it's a rounded edge and the rounded edge doesn't feel harsh on the wrist it just it is comfortable if I flip the watch out, you do see we have these little metal pins and they slot into those little areas on the side of the case and that's how it's held in place. It feels very sturdy. It clicks in very nicely, very definitively. It's not something like a super loud thud mechanical click. It's just a nice little soft, oh, yep, now the watch is in place. And it does feel sturdy. It does feel well done and it doesn't feel cheap. What's nice is the actual case as you're turning around really doesn't squeak very often. And at the end of the day, it's a lot more refined than I would have expected at this price point. Every once in a while, especially if you're going faster, you can get a squeak to kind of squeak out there. Uh, but it, it really isn't that bad and I don't think it detracts too much. And although this watch has a little bit of more of a bulky-ish appearance just from the side on, it really doesn't wear that badly on wrist in my opinion and it actually is still thin enough and comfortable enough to wear under a dress cuff. I had no problems fitting this in my dress shirts. Uh, 12 millimeters isn't the thinnest but because the watch is a relatively small in length and realistically it's not that that thick, it does fit under a cuff fine. To me, I think dead on the watch looks perfect against those rounded edges. Don't make it uh, as harsh and geometric and as, I guess, thick as it actually could look if they really wanted to make it really blocky. Uh, and yeah, let's try it on wrist and just see how it wears. Earlier, I was wearing my new Christopher Ward here, but I'm gonna put on my Cartier tank just as a more one-to-one -one comparison. So here we have the Cartier sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. And then we have the Vario sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. I think it looks pretty proportional. It doesn't look too big. To me, dead on, it doesn't look too thick. Of course, if you turn the wrist to the side, it looks thicker, but again, I don't think it's very badly done. They could have maybe added a little bit of stepping to the case to make it maybe not so dramatic or uh, give it a little bit more of a visual lead up to this uh, kind of more blocky midsection. But I also think they kind of wanted to stray away a little bit from the classic Art Deco styling. They did use the term streamline modern on their website, and basically that is kind of more sweeping uh, angles and more softer lines. And I think if you would have made a step case, unless you made it very rounded on each step, it may have not executed itself perfectly. But as it stands, it's very comfortable to wear. I think it is very proportional for my six and a half inch wrist. Um, it, I don't think it rises up off the wrist too bad. It's not too uh, sharp or anything. It is just a very comfortable watch to wear. If I move up the watch a little bit more on my wrist, I have closer to a six inch wrist here. And you can see it is still very proportional, still very much wearable. You can go on a really down to a very small wrist with this watch and it still looked pretty nice and I just do think it wears really well. The thing I will note is the watches all come on this like color matched Vario Italian leather which the leather itself is very comfortable it breaks in super buttery right out of the box but they all do come on this classic like butterfly style uh, deployant strap. I'm not the biggest fan of deployants or butterfly class so this is kind of like my, my least favorite type of strap uh, buckle closure ever but as it stands it's not too badly done it's just not uh, perfect I don't think it's serviceable you do have the Vario signed into there it's not bad by any means but I would prefer just a regular tang buckle there we have the Vario from the side view again this isn't its least uh, pretty view I guess you could say but you're never really looking at your watch from that angle and as I said it does not have a problem fitting under a dress cuff anyway so I think from dead on it looks fantastic uh, from kind of like down the barrel like that, I don't think it looks too bad either. So 
as it stands, I think for the price, this is amazingly designed and just comes together really nicely. And there we have it switching over to the silver side. I will put it on a different strap because obviously the green isn't the perfect pairing in my opinion. But yeah, still classy looking, still very nice. Again, the screws are gonna be on this side if that's not something you're into. At the end of the day, you still do have the colored side anyway. So maybe you'll wear that uh, on one side more than the other. But as it stands, I don't think the silver looks too bad with the screws. Thing to note before I move on to some other straps is the crown is definitely small and you can see how it is recessed a little bit into the case itself. It is nice because you do have this like little lip where you can grab it at each side and kind of pull it out. It's a little bit hard to pull out. The crown is fairly thin. Uh, the knurling is fairly small. It is nicely done. It's brushed. It has the signed V for the Vario there, but you have to kind of definitely try to grab it with two fingers and the pop out is very shallow. So although it works and the time setting is not bad, it's one of those things where maybe the crown action can be improved on. I don't know if it can. I don't know if it's a limitation of the quartz movement, but as it stands, the crown action isn't the most premium, but it also isn't bad. It's not like it's a uh, very wobbly or feels cheap or anything like that. It just is a little bit shallow, a little bit hard to get your fingers in there at times. Uh, so yeah, that is just a kind of quirk of the watch that you have to live with for the price point. See, that is the crown out and that is the crown in. Very small difference. So even when you do pull it out, it is a very kind of abrupt feeling. Moving on to some other straps here, we have this gray strap from Deluxe. It is very comfortable, very thin. At the end of the day, it's very color neutral, so it matches with both the green and the silver dial, which is really nice. And I think it's nice very went with a 20 millimeter lug width because it's just very standard, very universal, uh, and will be easy to get straps for this. And there we have it, not too bad. Love the way the case shines because you have those more softer rounded edges. The way they catch the light and disperse it is just very nice, very premium feeling. And I think when you look at the watch dead on like this, it, it does feel much more premium than the $400 price, I think. Something I do kind of like too, is you can see, I mean, there is a little bit of a space in the case kind of at the top and very, very slightly at the edges. So there is like uh, an almost feeling that the case itself is suspended. Obviously it needs room to flip around, but it is a cool kind of architectural design point where it just feels interesting. It is cool. You kind of are able to see through the case and see behind it a little bit. It has a little bit of shadow behind it. Uh, so it is just a really cool effect. And I just like how this is designed. Looks just as good, maybe even better on the silver dial. You get that very grayed out, uh, very monotone type of look and the dial ends up popping a little bit more. Next we have this cork strap from Theo and Harris. I think it's a very fun combo. Adds a little bit of color to the watch, but doesn't go crazy. Again, matches with both dial colors. So that's always great. Uh, and yeah, let's get it on wrist. Pretty fun, I think. Maybe not as great as a combo, maybe not as versatile as the gray strap from earlier, but I don't mind it. And there we have it on the silver dial. Next, we have this more casual tone from the Leather Merchant. Really nice strap, very nice 20 to 16 taper, very classical, uh, and I think looks pretty good on the watch. Obviously a little bit more of a casual leather, but to me, it still looks great. And there we have it on the green dial, matches just as well. What's great about having two dials is basically sometimes you can have a strap that looks horrendous on one side and then you just flip it over. And on the other side, it looks like it was meant to be. This is another Vario Italian leather strap in more of a distressed grain. Looks fantastic, really pairs with the blue hands on the watch, the silver tones, makes it a little bit more casual, but not too much. Uh, and I just think it looks fantastic on the watch. I think Vario makes fantastic straps for the price. And thankfully, a lot of them pair really well with this watch. And lastly, the classic white Archer silicone strap pairs pretty well with the wider dials especially since you have that very white inner uh, middle portion. And then the silver doesn't match perfectly, but at some angles it does go a little bit more white than silver. So, you know, does match-esque. 20 millimeter strap with pretty much no taper. It just plants the watch really well. And I think it looks pretty at home on the watch and especially on this dial side. And since you have those screws, it kind of makes me feel like the side of the dial leans a little bit sporty. And when you put it on a sporty strap like this, it is perfect. Flipping it over, it pairs just as well, if not even better. You have the green that pops even more against the white. You have all the white printing that just really pairs well with the strap. To me, it, you just really can't go wrong with this strap, especially on this watch. So pros and cons of this watch. And I think one of the biggest pros is really just the fun design of it. At the end of the day, there aren't many Reverso slash Cartier alternatives, especially not uh, well done ones out there. You can get the very, very cheap like Seiko or uh, cheap no-name branded ones for like, you know, 20, 40, 50 bucks or something. Uh, but there isn't anything that actually 
tries to be unique, tries to do its own thing, and gives you something that's not just a blatant knockoff. This is one of those very few watches where I just went, wow, it's awesome that they're even doing that. So it's nice that they followed through with the design. They actually executed, I think, fairly well. And they didn't take it too seriously. They didn't go for like a black and a white dial combo. They did some fun colors, and it's always nice to have more color in the watch box. My next pro is just that the dials are fairly high quality. The enamel type work that's done on the color dials I think is just really, really nice. You have a beautiful color depth to it and just a very sleek appearance to the actual dial itself. Uh, whereas the silver, more standard, more classical uh, dial face is just simple. It's clean, but it's well executed. You have brushing, you have a kind of sector type feel to it. And it is something that is just better than a plain white. They could have just easily done uh, enamel color and then enamel white on the other side. And I think it would have been a little bit boring, a little bit more of a cop out. This one is two completely differently designed dials, two different feels to the watch. And it's awesome that they just did that. And it's great that they went that extra mile to just make the watch more interesting. My last pro is the watch is just very nice feeling in hand. I think the finishing in terms of the polishing on the case and the brushing is done very well, the way the watch catches light, the rounded edges, the way it reacts, it is just very premium. Uh, and on top of that, the actual action to the switching of the watch face feels good. It is very smooth. It doesn't really like catch it. It's not too much of a mechanical thud and click that feels a little bit like too crunchy in any way. It's very smooth. It feels very refined. Uh, at times you do hear maybe a very soft squeak uh, every once in a while. And that's usually just when I'm kind of spinning it too fast for no reason. Uh, but I think part of that might just be because it's new and the mechanism kind of needs to get a little bit wear in. So moving on to cons and I guess starting with the crown, it has a kind of weird feeling about it, I guess you can say. It doesn't pop out very far from the base case. Um, sometimes when you pull it out, you're not sure if you went all the way or not. So it's one of those weird actuation feelings where uh, I feel like it can be a little bit more uh, visceral in its action. I feel like if you there was a more audible click or something, it'd be a little bit better, but maybe there's only so much you can do with this quartz movement. I don't know, I've never encountered this quartz movement before. Looking at other quartz watches I had, like even my Cartier tank that I showed earlier, that has the same issue. The crown pulls out very shallow and it doesn't uh, feel very, I guess, nice <laughs> when you have it pulled out all the way. It, it's not, a, there's no defined click. It just is very whatever. So it, it might just be an issue with the quartz caliber. And as it stands, I'd rather have that, you know, six year battery and the thinness of the quartz caliber, because if you used any other caliber, it would probably be much thicker and much more unwieldy. My next con, and it's not a huge point for me, but it is the thickness. Uh, at first, when I got the watch in hand, the first day I was like, it is a kind of weirdly thick watch because I've had the tank, I've had the Reverso, um, and those are much more refined. And at the end of the day, they're also much more expensive. So kind of reframing my mind, actually wearing the watch, actually living with it, actually just looking at it on my wrist, uh, the thickness kind of just melted away from me. I didn't care at, at all really uh, in terms of actually wearing it with dress cuffs. It still slid under. It didn't cause me any issues. So it's one of those points where like, yes, it's on the thicker side. It's not a sub 10 millimeter watch. It's not the uh, you know thinnest quartz movement in the world. At the end of the day, you have two movements in this watch, uh, which is cool because you can track two time zones. But it, there's a give and take. I think for the way it actually wears, the way it looks, the way you're going to be actually interacting with the watch on day to day, you're not going to really notice the thickness that much unless you just harp on it and look at it, the watch from like the side view, which I never do to any of my watches. So, you know, if it's something you know that's going to bother you, maybe steer clear. But if you're interested, I think it's going to end up being a non-issue. So final thoughts on the watch. I do think it's really, really interesting and I actually do like it a lot. It's one of those designs where when I first saw it, I was like, yes, I definitely want to see that in person. I want to see how it is, but I didn't know if it was going to be well executed on it. I didn't know if it was going to be able to hold a candle to the reverse or the Cartier tank. And uh, those are but watches I've both had and I loved owning them. This ended up being a watch that I think actually is a very strong contender to be a uh, kind of stand in for if you want to reverse. So if you really have always eyed that watch, but you didn't want to pay the price or you thought, you know, I'm not really a dress watch guy and I'm not going to spend seven, eight thousand dollars on a watch I'm not going to wear very often. This is a great option. It gives you that kind of functionality. It gives you that feel. 
uh, but for a lot more affordable and you don't have to service it really as often either. So it, it is just kind of like a win-win. It is well executed, it looks nice, uh, and I think it does the job well enough to where you can end up being very happy with the watch. I do just really like how this Vario has made its own design language. Obviously it borrows some inspiration from the Cartier tank, it borrows some inspiration from the Reverso, it borrows some inspiration from the Basculante, uh, but it blends them all in a way that's not too direct of an homage, it's not too direct of a copy, and it still has its own little bit of flair about it. Uh, and I think it does it pretty well, it does it pretty convincingly, and uh, as a person who genuinely just kind of tends towards and loves dress watches, this is a fantastic dress watch. It's not something I thought I'd give my wholehearted kind of stamp of approval to, but I do just really like it, and I think it's hard to argue that there's a better dress watch out there. There's not many dress watches with untraditional case shapes. There's not many micro brands doing the styling or something as really interesting. I did look at the Laurier Zephyr recently and that's probably the closest comparison. But honestly, between the two, I would personally go for this watch. I think it's more fun, it's a little bit more quirky, it's a slight bit cheaper and why not? Those are my thoughts on the Vario here. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, thank you as always for watching the video. I appreciate your time and I'll see you in another one.